Hello guys, uh, in this video I want to do the following problem. I want to find uh, the area which is going to be enclosed by the following curve. And the curve is x minus one squared plus one uh, y squared is equal to one. So first you can recognize uh, that what do we have over here? We have uh, a unit circle, which is shifted uh, by one unit uh, to the right. So let me erase my coordinates and do it more clearly. So I have x, y coordinates, and then this is my one. So I have a unit circle that looks like this. Okay, and what uh, I want to use, I want to use double integral for that. So basically first let's indicate what is my region D. My region D is going to be uh, the inside of the circle. And what I want to do, I want to evaluate the double integral over D of one dA. So what does it mean over here? Uh, this integral basically indicates that find the area of region D. And uh, why I chose function equal to one, I can explain in uh, my next video, but you just need to be with me. Every time when you want to find the area of some region uh, into D, you just need to take the double integral over that region where your function is equal to one. Okay, so, but for this case, let's try to evaluate this integral. So the tricky part about this integral is that I need to use the polar coordinates and I need to figure out my bounds. So when I'm going to use polar coordinates, uh, what do we do with our dA? Since polar coordinates involves the coordinates R and theta, then dA is going to be expanded in terms of uh, dR and d theta. But when it's going to be expanded in terms of dr and d theta, we do need to forget that uh, we're going to have some extra factor, which is called like a Jacobian. Okay, so uh, usually when we change this integral to the polar coordinates, you're going to plug in uh, r cosine theta, r sine theta in terms of x and y. But since this function uh, is just constant one, so I will, I'm going to just rewrite one. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put uh, my integral r dr, d theta. So in other words, what happened over here, we expanded dA as r dr d theta. Okay, so our next goal is try to figure out like what are the bounds for uh, our double integral. And let me show you how to do that. So first uh, we can see that d theta goes last so that means the bounds for d theta are going to be constants. Uh, or in other words, we want to describe what is the minimum theta and what is the maximum theta of our region. So let's take a look at this picture. You can see if I'm going to take theta is equal to uh, pi over four and theta is equal to negative pi over four, then uh, if I'm going to allow only my theta changes to negative pi over four and pi over four, we're going to have some region which is missing. So in order like not to do that, what I need to do with my theta, I need to approach my theta to pi over two and uh, approach uh, the opposite line to the angle of negative pi over two. And then you can see if we have uh, the bounds of our theta between negative pi over two to pi over two, then our region is going to completely uh, within that theta bounds. So that's why I'm going to say that my theta changes from negative pi over two to pi over two. Okay, next is the tricky part, uh, the radius. And here, uh, as I discussed in my last video, uh, we need to observe one small thing. If I will choose my theta equal to zero, then you can see that this point over here is one zero. And this point over here is two zero. Or in other words, my r in this case is going to change between zero and two. But what is, what is going to happen if I'm going to take theta pi over two, sorry, pi over four? Then if I'm going to take theta pi over four, then my r is going to change between this value zero to some value over here, which is obviously is going to be smaller than the original value uh, two here. And then if I'm going to take my theta and move my theta towards pi over two, you can see that my upper bound of my radius is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So in other words means that 
uh, my R upper bound is going to depend on theta. So first you can see that my lower bound here is going to be zero because again, like for every theta, if I'm going to draw this line, um, R is equal to zero always lies inside my region. But how to figure out what is my uh, upper bound for theta? But my upper bound of theta is going to be bounded by or described by this circle. And since I work in polar coordinates, I want to write that the equation as a boundary in terms of polar coordinates. And how do I do that? The idea is I'm just take this equation. And what I'm going to do inside this equation, I'm going to plug it in my, instead of x, I will put r cosine theta. And instead of y, I'm going to put r sine theta. And then I will solve for r. Uh, because I want to express r in terms of theta. So first, let me take that expression, uh, x minus one uh, squared plus y squared is equal to one, and just simplify it. I'm going to get x squared minus two x plus one plus y squared is equal to one. So one and one will cancel. So I'm going to have x squared minus two x plus y squared is equal to zero. So right now I'm going to plug in r cosine theta. So I'm going to get r squared cosine squared theta minus two r uh, cosine theta plus r squared sine uh, squared uh, theta is equal to zero. So first you can see if I'm going to take this term and this term and factor r squared, then cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. So I'm going to have r squared uh, as a result. And then we'll have minus two r cosine theta is equal to zero. But then what I can do, I can move uh, two r cosine theta to the right. So we'll have r squared is equal to two r cosine theta. And from here, I can cancel out by r, since I will take that r is not equal to zero. Because if r is always equal to zero, then I'm going to get just a dot at one point at the origin, which is obviously is not our original region. So r uh, is not uh, equal to zero. Okay, uh, so after this, I'm going to get that r is equal to two cosine theta. Okay, so then this is my bound, two cosine theta. Okay, and finally, let's evaluate this integral. So what we're going to get, um, So here, first, uh, I'm going to integrate corresponding to r. I'm going to have integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of r squared over two uh, times, uh, so in my bounds from zero to two cosine theta. And I'm gonna have d theta. Then from here, I can see that I'm going to have uh, integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of um, four cosine square theta divided by two d theta. Or well, in other words, what I'm going to have, I'm going to have uh, two times the integral of cosine square theta, but cosine square theta I did in my previous um, video is going to be just one plus cosine two theta divided by two uh the theta yes okay and then from here two and two will get cancelled and then i'm going to have the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of one d theta minus oh sorry plus the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of cosine two theta d theta and here uh, you can see that from the first integral, I'm gonna get answer as a pi. And my second integral is going to be actually equal to zero. So my final answer is going to be uh, pi. And this actually works because again, like here I have a circle of uh, radius one. And we know that uh, area of the circle where is radius one is pi r squared. So it's going to be just equal to pi. And another reason why is this integral is zero, because if you're going to integrate that integral, you will get sine of two theta, 
But when you're going to evaluate your sign at pi over two, negative pi over two will have sine of pi negative pi, which is zero. So then the integral is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so in our final answer then, the area which is uh, enclosed by uh, a circle with radius one centered at one zero is going to be equal to pi. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. And yeah, so have a good day. Bye-bye.